this little part is not being made on our Swiss Nano. It's actually being made on one of our bigger machines. Every Swiss machine has a number on it just like this one, and that is the maximum capacity of your machine. So for example, on this machine, it's 26 millimeter. But what no one ever talks about is how small of a part can you make on a bigger machine like this? Well, that's exactly what I wanna show you in today's video, and I wanna give you some tips and tricks if you ever run into this problem. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the material you're gonna use for this part. Now, normally when you're quoting a job on a Swiss machine, you get the material that's closest to the biggest diameter of your part, so you can just take a small skim cut to make it to size. But with this, that's not gonna really be a problem. What you really need to worry about is rigidity, the functionality of your machine. See, with a part like this, I could have got away with like 1 8 material, right? But when you pick up a 12 foot long, 1 8 inch diameter bar, it can bend, it can jam in your bar feeder, you can have all sorts of problems. So I used quarter inch material. Now you might be saying, that's a waste of material. I said material like four times, whatever. You might be thinking it's a waste of material, but it's not really because if you get quotes for 1 8 steel and quarter inch steel, you're gonna seriously be wasting at most a penny per part. It's not important. What's more important is functionality. So we get bigger material to make it easier to handle and to load in our machine. This will also help with the rigidity. Now, when we look in solid cam here, you could see my part is this tiny little tab sticking off the end of my material and that looks weak, but you can actually see when I push on the part, it's way more rigid than you would think. Now, if the bar was 1 8 in diameter, I would be able to bend this whole thing and ruin it. So again, it doesn't really matter that it's that much bigger and it actually helps a lot with the rigidity. And the most important operation we're going to need rigidity for is the initial cutoff we do when we start our Swiss machine up. As you can see from the footage here, if that bar was half the size it is, it would easily bend during the cutoff process. Now the next thing we need to talk about that's gonna be a little bit different is how we get the part out of the machine with our ejector. This right here is your normal ejector and this is about as small as we can go. As you can see here, this is pretty long for being at 1 8 diameter. And you need it like that to get through your collet. So normally you know what you do is you open up your collet and you knock the part out, right? Well, I would need to make this about one millimeter in diameter to eject the part in the conventional way, which is a problem because this isn't perfect, right? It can easily hit something in the back of the collet and bend. And if it bends and it breaks, what's gonna happen is your part's gonna stay in your sub collet and it's gonna absolutely obliterate itself when it goes to pick up your next part. So what can you do to solve this problem? Well, you can actually take your whole ejector out. Then you can just use the through coolant of your spindle, just oil pressure, to come up to the ejection tray, turn on the oil and knock the part out. And that's gonna cause one other problem you have to watch out for and that problem is right here. Now, if you look, this is gonna fill with oil all the oil is gonna come out and into this tray. So you really need to make sure the oil has a way out to go back into your machine. So yes, if you look down in here, you could see my oil will actually go right through this channel and back into the coolant tank of the machine. I have no problems to worry about. So another thing you're gonna see is your parts are gonna find their ways into little crevices like down in these corners here. And if you actually look below the belt on this machine, you can see Tornos has a secondary scraper. So. It's pretty nice actually because honestly, any part that gets through everything and is still stuck to the belt, this is going to scrape it off and at least keep it right here for you to find. So gotta give it to Tornos, that's actually a pretty good design. So it's kind of the worst part about running really small parts in a normal size machine is that you are gonna have to take this little plate off right here and dig for some parts. But again, it's still possible and you can still do it. Is it the most efficient, best way ever? No, but is it better than buying an entirely brand new CNC machine just to run a job? Absolutely, and that's why these few tricks right here can make your life a lot easier when making tiny, tiny parts. So with this conveyor belt right here, this is about how much I had to MacGyver it to get it so all my parts came out. Out of 400 parts so far, I've only lost one, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the part counter. You can use this to make sure that everything I just explained to you is actually working well. What you don't want to do is just trust this, right? This machine is not actually really meant to eject parts that small. It can lose them. So what you need to do is go over to your part counter right here. Now you can see right here we have parts to produce, parts produced, remaining parts, and parts total. So all I'll do is on parts to produce, I'll put 10. So 10 insert, okay? and it'll even update the remaining parts automatically. And then what we'll do is we'll run 10 parts. You'll take them out and you'll count them. If you have 10 parts, then everything seems to be working okay. 
After that, I recommend running like 50. And if you get 50 out of 50 parts, that's a pretty good certainty that this is gonna work fine. So always double check that. If it isn't working, then maybe there's something in the conveyor belt or in the ejection tray that you need to modify a little bit to make it so the parts land smoother. It's not uncommon. It's also not a big deal. Just kind of assess it and fix it for whatever comes up. There is one last final thing we have to go over here in this video, and that is going to be, I'm joking. There's no dry erase board this time. Thank you for watching till the end. See ya.